How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're going to be talking about contractor tips that can help extend the life of your RV. So today I wanted to share tips from a contractor's perspective about the RV. I used to be a general contractor from building homes to remodels and all different kinds of phases of construction. And so some of those things, when I'm looking at the RV, I can't really turn my mind off from what I've done in the past to trying to apply that to the RV. So today we're gonna look at a handful of those things. And first off, we're gonna look at the electrical components because this thing going down the road, shaking all the time, you're gonna have loose connections and that can lead to big problems. This is an area that if you have a loose connection, you can have a lot of problems be created. Everything from burning up a wire, causing electrical failures in the RV, or even causing a fire inside of the RV, which would be catastrophic and horrible. So you wanna make sure that these connections are tight. And actually there's some specs on the back if you wanted to tighten them to the proper torque spec. You can use a torque screwdriver or you can use a torque wrench. This one this is a smaller torque wrench, so it's an inch pounds. I have a larger one for doing the lugs on the RV and that's and foot pounds so you don't want to use the larger one where you're going to be needing inch pounds so just pay attention to what you're doing but tightening all this up is going to save uh give you that prevention so that you don't have a fire happening in here so you want to tighten this also the dc distribution panel and anything that has a, an electrical connection that you can tighten down if it's the transfer switch or if it's the ems that you have hardwired on the rv you want to tighten those down so i'm going to go to that front bay also and i'm going to tighten any electrical connections that I have to do with the DC system over by our inverter. The key is here, you wanna make sure that everything is tight. I would rather do a little bit of preventative maintenance and make sure that I'm not gonna have any problems than end up with a problem. And in a, a home for construction, you don't usually have that as, as big as you would on an RV. You can still have terminals come loose with, with heat and everything, but with everything that moves on an RV, it's even that much more important. When you're building something in construction, the life safety issues like electrical are really important. But another thing that's important is making sure that everything is sealed up properly. Water is one of those kind of strange things that gives life, but also can cause a tremendous amount of destruction. And when water is getting somewhere where you don't want it on the RV, it, it can really be catastrophic. So like the sides of these windows, we can see where that butyl tape is just dry and crusted. And there's not much of a, a seal happening on this window here on this little project that I'm working on. So getting in there, cutting out this kind of crusted butyl tape on there and giving it a nice seal on the outside, having multiple layers to seal up a seam on an RV is really important. If you're just relying on one seal, then it's probably going to fail at some point. But if you have the multiple layers, it's gonna give longevity and life to that seam on the RV. So you can see on our fifth wheel RV, the window already has that caulking all the way around it to protect it. So some of the older trailers and RVs need to be brought up to that with that layer of protection on the outside of the window. And then I also just gonna keep an eye on this as it ages. Okay, here's another one using a Turnabon tape. This is actually two different brands of it, but I have three tips to go along if you're putting this type of tape on your roof of an RV. So number one, you wanna get the right tape for the right job. Make sure that it works for your roof system, whether it's EPDM or TPO or whatever you might have on your RV, make sure it's the right tape. Number two, Prep work is always key when doing projects like this. So when you're painting a house or you're doing tile work, that prep work cannot be underestimated. If you don't do the proper prep work, this kind of thing is not going to work. So number one, I always like to make sure that the surface is as clean as possibly can be. So no oil on there. You wanna have that oil cleaned up with some rubbing alcohol. And then I usually clean that off with just a, a damp rag to make sure that nothing else is on there and then let that dry out. And then the third key to this is when you put it down, it's, it's really more of like a compression tape. So you wanna make sure that it has really good adhesion on there. It's fully compressed onto there. They even recommend using a roller to be able to roll it out so that everything has pressure down to the surface that you're trying to stick to. So that's kind of the, the trick to using stuff like this is the, the preparation and the compression to, to get it on there properly. Now on that same thought of preparation, thinking about copper for the RV, when we used to sweat pipes before PEX became so popular, you'd have to 
to clean and prepare that copper really well. It'd have to, to shine before you can sweat that, those copper pipes together. And so we do have copper that's going to be on our connections for plugging in our RV. And when these build up and have corrosion on them, we want them clean because that is what is going to give us good contact. If you don't have good contact, just like tightening up those wires, that weak connection point is gonna create a ton of heat. And that's why you see so many plugs melted. It's not the only reason why you see them, but it, it is a contributing factor to why so many plugs melt out there is you have a bad connection and it creates a lot of heat and it melts. So I like to use this deoxid. I'll put links down in the description to everything that we're talking about today, but this helps remove that oxidation, helps clean it and kind of helps seal it. So if I need to have any kind of abrasion to cut through any of that that's built up on there, I'll use like a scrub pad to be able to get that copper in a good condition for a good connection because I don't want my end of the connection to be the problem when I go to plug in uh, to a generator, somebody's house at an RV park, whatever that might be. I want those connections on my end to be as good as they possibly can. So this last one is a bit of an experiment and it has to do with the way that the water sheds off coming off the roof and to the sidewall of the RV. The way most RVs are out there is we have that trim piece that goes along the outside and it has a tendency to be able to catch and hold water against the screws that are in there, which could be a penetration in, and that can cause a lot of problems with an RV. I just pulled a ladder off of a trailer the other day and that ladder was holding water in there and it was starting to delaminate, cause rust and break down the wood and the sidewall that was there and so that whole thing had to be removed and replaced and we have to make sure that that water doesn't hold in there so that same thing is going to hold true for this uh, transition from the roof to the wall system. So we have that whole track held up there with screws going through. There's butyl tape behind it, which gives you one layer of protection, but not having an additional layer of protection could leave it to leaking. And I have seen that in a lot of RVs. So what I did is I pulled each screw out and I put a little bit of sealant behind it. So that way there's sealant of that screw going in, sealant of the going through the butyl tape. So it has two layers of sealant in there. But the problem is we put that trim cover on there. That's to hide the screws and to hopefully keep out some of the moisture going into there. But I can guarantee you it's not 100%. Water is getting behind that trim piece. And sometimes being held there up against those screws and that water just wants to try and find a way in. So on the RV, you have this trim piece and the way that it's usually put on there is it nestles into that track, but at the very end, they loop it over, they put a screw behind it to hold it in place. So it's not gonna blow off in the wind. It's gonna be held on there securely, uh, but it creates a, a place that the water is gonna get trapped in there. So when I've pulled this trim off after a rain, you can see water coming out. So what I did is at the very end there at the bottom of our roof is I just drilled a little hole in there. This might be a little bit controversial, but I don't wanna hold any water in this trim piece and have it try and work its way through those screws. So that little hole is kind of like a, a weep screed or a weep hole so that that water, when it does, if it does get in there, it has a way to get out and it's not sitting there up against the RV, kind of like it was on that ladder and deteriorated everything on there. So I'm giving the water a path out. I'm having two layers of sealant in there and hopefully I don't have any failure along that trim piece going from the roof to the wall. So I'll let you know how this experiment goes, how the trim piece holds up with the, the hole that's in it. I have seen it after a rain have significantly less water than it did on the side that I didn't drill. So uh, it is working for that, getting the water out once it finds its way in. But it's just kind of having that, that thought behind it of you want that water to shed off. You don't want to harbor any water on the RV where it shouldn't be. Just kind of following that path all the way through. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope some of these tips help you guys out, whether it's tightening up the electrical on your RV or, or cleaning up the electrical contacts or just keeping the water away from where it shouldn't be on the RV. So again, like I said, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos about RVing, hit that subscribe button. And if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will. See you next video.